Hi, everyone that's coming on. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Sonalika. Um, we're going to be using the um, QA. If you guys can all use the QA function, if you have questions, I'm going to be checking that. I think we have a pretty good group today, um, probably around 25 or 30, which I think will be awesome because then we can do some questions. Um, we'll see how many people get on. Um, I hope you are all doing okay, and um, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. My assistant is um, having had to have some uh, medical leave, and so I'm doing this by myself. <laughs> so I'm going to ask for a little grace because I'm going to have to read the questions if we have them, but I think our group is probably going to be small enough that it'll be perfect because I'll be able to answer questions and talk a little bit. And there's no slides. I had a slide deck and then I thought, oh, I, I'm kind of over slides right now. So it's going to be really conversational and I have just a few points that I want to talk about and then we can answer questions um, once everybody gets on. But feel free to post some questions or comments um, in the QA box. And let me see if I can open up the QA here. And I, like I said, or the chat, uh, questions would be great in the QA. Hi, hi, hello, hello, thank you. I've been laughing because I, I bought these earrings right before the pandemic hit. And I don't think I've worn them out of the house, um, obviously. <laughs> But I'm like, I've worn them on so many webinars that I'm sure people are so over these earrings. So if you've seen these earrings on me like 500 times, I'm really, I'm really, really sorry. I feel like I need to apologize for the COVID, the COVID earrings that I've been wearing and during literally every webinar because I'm, I, I haven't been out of the house, right? Like it's been the hospital or our home for most of us or our workplace and our home. Um, and it's crazy to me how awkward it feels to go anywhere. Like the other day I was in my office at work and I took my mask off in my own office. And then I forgot my mask to walk out of my office. And I felt like I just was gonna, like there was police were gonna arrest me or somebody was gonna scream at me. And I was having such anxiety. And it's so funny because I thought, oh my gosh, our world has changed so much that I literally opened my office door to walk out of my own personal office and I forgot my mask and felt like I was breaking like 10,000 rules. So um, definitely an interesting time that we are all in. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes. Does anybody have any anything to share before we start? Got on a little early. I cannot see anybody, but maybe I'm not doing this right. This is why I need my assistant. <laughs> She's so good. And she, bless her heart, you're getting ready to open up your private practice and you're feeling nervous. I bet you are. That This is a that's a big deal. Congratulations on opening your own practice. I cannot imagine. That is, wow. Congratulations on that. That has to feel really nerve wracking, I'm sure, but also really encouraging and really exciting. I'm sure you're having lots of feelings and thoughts about that. 
Dun, dun. Okay. Let's see here. Um, once I talk for a little bit, then I'll, I'll see if I can allow, open it up for everybody else to talk. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Welcome, Cindy. Welcome, Jennifer. I'm really excited to chat with all of you tonight. What is the, where is everyone, can everyone put in the chat or in the QA where they are in the country or the world? Oh, good. Well, I'll talk about both of those. Those are great questions. How to build confidence quickly before starting a meeting and how to generate authority as a female. Those are really good questions. We'll chat about both of those tonight. We're going to start in about three more, let's see what, three more minutes and we'll get started. Okay, so Teresa's in Texas. Laura is in Virginia. Jennifer's in California. Love it. Uh, in Rapid City, South Dakota. I'm excited that you're here too. Is it, am I saying your name correctly? Sonalika, that is a beautiful name. Um, I hope I'm saying it right. For, please forgive me if I'm not and correct me if I'm not. It's gorgeous. Oh, Sonali, like that, okay. So beautiful, yes, Sonali, okay. I know, a, I know a couple Sonalis, so that I know, I was just adding the K-A to the end and making, the, making it incorrect, so thank you for correcting me. I love it, we have some Midwest people, we have some Texans, we have some East Coast, love it, love it, love it. California, it's finally getting warm here in the Midwest and I'm loving the sun. I, June was, or May was really, really um, cold in Nebraska, which is not usual for May. And we had a lot of rain, which was good for the farmers, but it was so dark. And um, I don't know if all of you are struggling with a little bit of just kind of being in a funk with the depression and then the weather having been so dark and dreary, I was like, is summer ever gonna get here? <laughs> So I I'm very excited that it's a little warm. Okay, um, two more minutes and we'll get started. Hi, Cassie. This is awesome. We have some, we have a good group here. This is gonna be great. We're putting Cassie in the, in the chat where we are from, if you wanna do that. Uh, so Nolly wants to know what specialties are represented and we might have some um, people outside of medicine too, uh, which is always good to, I think, get a lot of diverse opinions and thoughts from different types of women from different places. Hi, Cassie. Oh, Cassie is here in Omaha, Nebraska. Awesome. Um, I love uh, when we hear from women in different areas of either healthcare or uh, law or education or business or tech because what I mostly find is that our problems are very similar. <laughs> the solutions may be different and that's really great because you get different ideas for how to overcome those solutions. Um, Nancy, you cannot hear me. Can everyone else hear me okay? Um, give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me. Just uh, say yes in here. Nancy, I'm sorry that you can't hear me. Okay, we're gonna start. I'm sorry, Nancy. Nancy, you're in Kansas City now, aren't you? Um, that There's nothing worse than being on a Zoom and your phone and having technical difficulties. Okay, so 
I want to get started because I'm just going to be on here for about 30 minutes. I thought we'd keep it short. I know how many of you have a million things to do, so I appreciate you coming on tonight. For those of you who don't know, I am Sasha Shilkut, and I am a cardiac anesthesiologist by day and sometimes night and on the weekends. <laughs> but um, I live in Omaha, Nebraska, and I own and founded a organization called Brave Enough. And I started this organization, oh good, Nancy, she's got it. About uh, five, three years ago, I started a group on Facebook, and then about three years ago, I started um, my organization. And I'm really, really passionate. My, my passion in life is teaching women how to invest in themselves because for years I waited for someone to invest in me and it took me about a decade and some struggles and some dark times in my life to come to the realization that I didn't need permission to invest in myself. I needed to really just get on board and, and look at myself differently than I was and start self-investing. And it wasn't until I started doing that and I'm still doing that. I can tell you that right now I'm enrolled. I just finished one course and I'm in the middle of another course and I'm starting, I just signed up for another in course about different topics that really interest me and, and really challenge me. And I'm going to start tonight. I really want to be honest with you. Um, I really struggled with whether to do this and continue to do this because I put this course together last January and I put it together because I actually started it last August. I finished in January to promote this and start this this month. And that was my plan because I was supposed to be doing a book tour. So I really wanted to do this course. I started it last August and built the curriculum and then everything has been hit the pandemic hit. And then um, all of the events in our country that are so painful right now that are just bubbling to the top that I thought, what am I, what am I doing talking about confidence? And I have to be really honest with you. I do not feel confident today. <laughs> okay. I don't feel confident. Um, I almost canceled this because I'm leading in a space. Um, and I'm not, I don't really know what I'm doing every day. Every day I wake up and I think, okay, my goal today is to help be part of the solution to look inside my own biases, my own, uh, how I view myself, how I move through the world, and how I view others as a leader. And I almost canceled this tonight because I did not feel confident. I don't feel confident and I'm being really transparent. But then I thought, this is what confidence, like how this is what I have to teach because confidence Number one is not a feeling. It's, it's not a feeling. Confidence comes, we know, from the science and data from taking action. So I just want to give you a very transparent picture that right now, like, I don't feel super confident doing this. Even though I've been studying this, I've written a book, I've been putting this together six months ago, I really struggled with whether or not to do this course. But I know in my heart that if I only did things when I felt, com felt confident, I wouldn't do the right thing. I hope that makes sense. So I wanna incur, I wanna be honest with you and transparent. There are many things going on in our world that need our attention and that need women to look inside themselves, change all of us, and to be a, a stand, uh, an upstander. So I don't wanna just go into tonight and without saying that. And without being honest that um, confidence is not a feeling. It's, it's not. I used to think it was. I used to think if I just achieved all these things, I would be more confident. But confidence is what we need. We need women right now, especially. I think we have, there is such a space and a place for women to be confident right now and to rise up and to do the right thing. So I'm coming at you very honest and very open and very transparent. And I'm sorry if I get tearful, but um, I, I just want to be honest that I am not some, you know, super, uh, I've got it all figured out. I don't. <laughs> so, but I, I'm passionate about teaching women to invest in themselves and invest in their confidence. And confidence is a muscle that's grown. So with that, 
very open and honest transparency there. I want to give you four little nuggets and just a little glimpse of the confidence course that I'm going to be teaching. And the reason that I am so passionate about this is because you can read all the books in the world and you can take all the courses in the world. But if you, in the moment when it's just you, if you don't have confidence to say yes to you and your own ideas and your own innovation and your own expertise in that moment, if you don't have confidence, you're not going to change. Whether it's about a relationship or whether it's about your uh, health and well being, or whether it's about setting a boundary at work, or whether it's about negotiating for pay, or whether it's about standing up for injustice, in that moment, it comes down to your internal confidence. And so that's why I wanted to just really focus on a confidence course for women. So the first thing I want to say is that I've learned is that, and I want to preface this by saying I study confidence in women. I have, I don't know the literature in men because that's not who I teach. So right there, I have a bias. I'm just saying it. I know the literature as it applies to gender and women. Confidence is not given. It's grown. And I used to imagine that confidence was something that it was like, you know, you went through the buffet line and you just got like so much confidence. <laughs> like, Sasha, this is your confidence and this is what you're going to be born with. And I thought it was like a personality thing. Okay. And I thought in my mind, my own biases were that, uh, you know, really outgoing or strong or tall or people that have a big presence were confident. And that's actually not true. Um, and I thought that confidence was something given. And actually what I'm going to teach in the course is confidence is grown. It's like a muscle. And anyone that does any weightlifting or any exercises knows that confidence comes, that you grow a muscle by stretching it and by injuring it just a little bit. So for those of you that are listening and thinking of all the things that have happened to you in your life where you failed or whether you've been hurt or whether you've been pushed down, kept back, held back, you probably have more confidence to tap into than you realize because you have probably been through some things that you can tap into to grow that muscle. So that's a hopeful thing. Confidence can be grown. The second one is confidence is not a personality. It's not. I, I was very mistaken and thought, okay, this person is confident because she is an extrovert or she's outgoing or she's a big personality or she has a strong voice. Confidence comes when we grow that internal voice in that moment. And that is associated with all personality types. So you can be a, an introvert and be very confident. You can be, you know, an extrovert and not have confidence. So I think we have some stereotypes in personalities that are not, that are incorrect. And when we see people acting in certain ways, so when we see actions of certain people, we think, oh, they're a confident person. And we also think that confidence is a feeling. It's not a feeling. What we know about confidence, the biggest point I want to make tonight is it comes by taking action. So basically experience. If you read anything by Malcolm Gladwell and you study the research that he has, he publishes, you know that it takes most people, um, I think it's a thousand, a thousand things, a thousand repetitions, I want to say. Um, or about three years to become experts in anything, which I think is really interesting because I remember reading that book years and years ago. And I remember thinking, oh, that's interesting because when I did my residency, I did a, a year of internal medicine as an anesthesiologist and then three years of anesthesiology. And I remember thinking I've done about a thousand anesthetics and there's specific metrics that measure abilities and skills. And those are highly related to confidence. So confidence is not something that when you achieve X or Y or Z, you just suddenly get, which I used to think like, if I get on this committee, I'll, that will grow my confidence. If I get this paper published, that will grow confidence. Well, what we know is that confidence actually comes from taking action. So for example, women that go to apply for a job, even if they don't apply for a, the job or they don't get the job, but they apply for the job, there's evidence to show it increases their confidence. 
And this is really important. This is really cool. It increases how others perceive their confidence. So say you're going to interview for something that you really want, but you know that maybe you are, have less years of experience or you have um, less X, Y, Z that is required on the job uh, requirements or the resume. If you apply for that job and you don't get that job, you may think, gosh, that was really a letdown. And that may damage my confidence if I apply for the job or my self-confidence and I don't get it. There's actually studies to show if you apply for the job, even if you independent of the result, it increases the, your confidence and it increases how everyone perceives your confidence. So they don't know if that's not clear is if your confidence increases because everyone else goes, oh wow, she applied for that job. She must be a really confident person and they see you as more confident and so you see yourself that way. Isn't that interesting? So it comes from taking action. And I think oftentimes we as women think that confidence is something that comes from taking, from getting the job or getting the promotion or getting the manuscript accepted, but we don't realize that it actually comes from doing the steps to do that. Okay. And that's so vital because oftentimes we don't take risks as women. We know this, we know that men take risks. They're much more apt to take career risk, even personal risk than we are. And that oftentimes holds us back because we are afraid of failure. And so it's comforting to know that taking risks is actually an action that builds confidence. And then the last thing that I want to leave you with is that confidence, if you think about it, I think sometimes I used to think confidence was how I appear to others. But confidence is really saying yes to you in that moment. So someone wrote in the chat, like, how do I get confident right before a meeting? That's exactly right. You, you hit the nail on the hammer because you can have all of the training in the world. You can have a published uh, whatever. You can have all the experience, you can be the expert, the content expert in this. But at, when it really drills down to it, speaking up, speaking and using your voice, right? Or saying, I want to be involved in that. I deserve a, a seat at the table. That comes down to you believing in you. It would be awesome, awesome, if all of us had sponsors where that pulled us forward that said, I think Amy would be awesome at that. Hey, Beth is actually an expert in this, right? I think Cindy is really good at this. Um, I think Divya, Divya is an expert in this. That would be amazing. But unfortunately, the data and the literature shows us we don't have sponsors and mentors as women. We lack them. So that's another reason why I feel so passionate about this course is because I'm, uh, most of us don't have those sponsors and mentors in the room when we need confidence to speak up and to give our idea or to say, what about me? I actually would be good at that or I'm an expert in this. Um, and it comes down to you. It's you and you alone. And I think that the message I really want to express tonight is you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to feel confident to be confident. I don't feel confident right now. I was actually having massive imposter syndrome. In fact, I literally asked my, I sent my husband a text an hour ago and said, do you think I should cancel this because of the situation in our country with systemic racism and because uh, I'm, I'm feeling like a failure in many regards and because I'm doing a lot of internal work and it's revealing in myself a lot of things I need. I'm in a growth period. That Let's just say that. I am in a growth period and I'm not feeling confident, but then I thought I have to go back to the data. And what does the data say? That confidence isn't a feeling. And so if I could get, if I give you one of you, one message that resonates tonight that makes you go out and stand up for someone or say something or do the right thing or if i give you any pearl that makes you believe in yourself 
So when you're there, you speak up for yourself and you share your idea because I believe women have so much creativity, innovation, ideas, leadership that we do not get to express because we're not in the room, we're not at the table, and we don't have the confidence to speak up when we are. We aren't heard. So if I can give you any pearl, <laughs> any encouragement tonight that makes you go, aha, I'm going to sp speak up. I'm going to submit. I'm going to say, what about me? I'm going to go for this. I'm going to be so in the face that they have to deny me <laughs> my innovation and creativity. If that happens to one of you, I've done, it's worth all of this. So that's why I'm here because I believe in the science of confidence and I really believe in helping women invest in themselves. So I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> I'm going to um, let you guys answer, ask some questions. Uh, the first question, put them in the QA if you can, is from Teresa. And Teresa says, how do you build confidence? Any tips on, on quick ways to feel confident before starting a meeting? How to generate authority as a female? Those are really great questions. Let me answer the first one. So the first one, I would say, um, quick ways to feel confident. One thing that I always think about before I give a talk is that I... I always have this anxiety. I don't know if you guys have ever done this before I speak, whether it's in a, I'm giving this talk like a professional talk or I'm just speaking in a room like full of people. I always, or we're on a Zoom, right? Many of us are on Zoom now. So I always think, oh, should I unmute myself and speak up or should I just stay muted? Because it's easier to stay muted, right? It is so much easier to stay muted. It is hard to unmute yourself, let's be honest. One of the things I always do is I always think the reason I want to speak and I'm having this internal battle is because I'm thinking of something that has not been said or I'm thinking of something that I know a lot about. Most women only feel passionate and speak up about things that they know a lot about. So I think this is really important because I tell myself that. I tell myself, remember the data. Very rarely do I like plant a flag and say, I think we should do this about something I know nothing about. But what is my little friend of me saying when I go to hit, when I'm like, oh, should I hit unmute? It always says the same thing. What if somebody else knows more than you? Well, first of all, most of the time I'm speaking up about something that hasn't been spoken up. So I'm calling out something new. And I always think, well, what if they do? They're not speaking up. And then the second thing I think is, if I've prepared myself for the meeting, I probably know the most about this because I'm really passionate about it and I've looked it up or I've studied it. There's always gonna be somebody that knows more than you in something, that's okay. Why does that, have to stop me from speaking up. So I have to kind of self-coach. I, I do this all the time. I kind of replay in my head. And I've just learned to not having have regrets. Um, several times I've, I, after the meeting, you know, is when the texts start and women will say, I wish somebody would have said this. How many times have you been in a meeting? And after the meeting is over, the text starts, right? I wish somebody would have brought this up. Oh, somebody should have said this. And I always think, why didn't you? Why didn't you? So one of the things that is so hard to do to speak up, um, it's really hard as a woman to speak up. So that's why it's so important that we amplify one another. You do not have to know another woman to amplify her. So if another woman that I don't even know is speaking up, but she's saying something and she's really, she knows what she's talking about because she's getting really passionate. Instead of me going, oh, I don't know why she's doing that. She's getting really passionate. I go, oh, I, you know a lot about this. Thank you so much. Can you tell us more? Everybody in the room goes, oh, Sash, this person must be an expert and listens. So I affirm one another because it is hard, right? Women, it is hard to speak up. It's hard to even get to the table, let alone speak up. So that's two things that I do. Um, Amy says, how do you generate confidence when asking a question of a male colleague when, when you entitled to ask a question, but they make you feel so small for asking. Um, you know, <laughs> one of the things I've started doing, um, 
and it's really interesting. I say, one of my leading statements is I will say, hey, Brian, I have a question. It's okay if you don't know the answer, but I have to ask you anyway. <laughs> and the reason I do that is because it puts us on a level playing field. And it makes them go, oh, she doesn't think I have all the answers. It's okay not to have all the answers. And I don't have to be a, like, bring my ego into this. And I do that all the time. I'll say, um, I need to ask a question, but I understand if you don't, I don't expect you to have the answer. It, it literally makes the ego go down. Does that make sense? Because, um, and I learned this from one of my, the speech coaches that I've listened to. It puts everybody's ego down because you're not, because a lot of times when you ask a question, if the person has a big ego or the person's really not confident in them, themselves or they're nervous, or they just may be your adversary, um, they think that you're calling them out. And so it kind of puts you on an evil, even playing field when you say that. That's one thing I do. How do you overcome imposter syndrome? Well, I wrote a whole chapter in my book, Between Grit and Grace, about imposter syndrome. It was the hardest chapter to write. For those of you that have read it, you know it's chapter eight. And um, it's something I constantly have to de deal with all the time. It's a lot better. I'm a lot better because I recognize it. I see it now. I go, oh, that's my, my friend of me talking to me. She's really strong. She's like really, really strong today, especially with this, um, talking about confidence. I think it is something that number one, if you have imposter syndrome, don't beat yourself up because it means that you are a high achiever, most likely. Most high achievers have imposter syndrome. And most people that care about their own self-awareness and self-actualization have imposter syndrome. It means you're not a narcissist. <laughs> so pat yourself on the back and be like, okay, good. I'm, I'm good. I got a little imposter syndrome. Check, check. Um, so, you know, it was funny because I once heard this amazing speaker talk about imposter syndrome and she was from Boston and she has published like hundreds of articles on it. And she said the funniest thing. She said, you know, almost everybody has uh, that's a high achiever has some level of imposter syndrome and it's highly related. It's, it's directly correlated with more achievement unless you're a narcissist. And the person sitting next to me dead serious was like, I've never had imposter syndrome. And he was like, does that mean I'm a narcissist? It was really funny. So give yourself a little grace, um, read chapter, uh, eight in my book. It, I hope that it's imposter syndrome is actually a, um, it's, it's like a collection of, of psychiatric thoughts that we have and that play in our mind and are formed and it's real. So there's tips and, and how to kind of overcome that in that chapter. How do you keep from second guessing yourself? Uh, that's a great question. I think I second guess myself a lot, but what I've learned is to stop the replay. So I have this mantra because for me, my replay comes at night after my day, when I'm brushing my teeth or getting ready for bed, I will think of the interactions I had that day. I will think of emails. I will think of this and think, gosh, was I too X. When, the, when that thought starts coming in my brain, that is pure my front of me talking and has no like space in my brain. So when I start to think, am I too whatever? Was I too nice? Was I too blunt? Was I too loud? Was I too forceful? Was I too strong? I just have to shut that down and go, nope, I'm not going to do the replay. I'm going to stop the replay. Today is done. Tomorrow's a new day. And don't, don't do the replay. Don't second guess yourself because that's a negative cycle that goes on and on and it stops you from moving forward, right? Um, what is the best way to find high faith to your inner um, grounding when going through a period of growth? Oh my gosh. Oh. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> um, I don't know if you were on at the beginning, but I said I almost canceled this because I am in a period of growth and I'm not feeling wonderfully confident. But I have to say this. It's like confidence comes from a little bit of pain, just like exercise. When you grow a muscle, 
when you grow a muscle, you have to hurt it to grow it. You have to stretch it and injure it a little bit. And it is times of our growth. You know, this is, this is the thing. I'm 45 years old. If there is a thought in my brain that I think I have become my best self at age 45, <laughs> I'm never going to grow. I'm never going to get better. That is 100% my ego. I can always be better. I can be better tomorrow and the next day. And I know you and I know you're in a period of growth. I see it. And I know that you are probably thinking, I'm a mess and I'm not where I should be and I'm going downhill. And that's such an easy thing to do. But I want you to think about this. You're better today than you were yesterday and you're going to be better tomorrow. And that is growth. And that doesn't mean that Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to figure everything out that I'm, I have every thought, every bias, every wrong feeling or action I have, and I'm going to correct them in 2020 and I'm going to be perfect the rest of my life. <laughs> that's just not, that's great. Um, I think we live in a society of right now of, of a lot of, there's so much hurt. And so what we do when you're an empathetic person and when you're a person who you want to be better, you take all that shame. And I know for many of us, we're feeling that shame right now. And so we're feeling bad about ourselves. We don't want to say, oh, we're okay. We're fine. We're just going to be fine. We don't need to work on ourselves. That's not the right answer. What the right answer is for me is to give myself grace. I'm not going to be perfect in 2020. I'm not going to be perfect in 2021. But I hope in 2021, I may be better than I was in 2020. So I want you to give yourself grace. And I want you to ground that, put your feet on grace, right? Give it to yourself. The most, the people that have, that give themselves space to grow, they're the people that stand on solid ground. They don't think they have to be perfect. They don't think they have to be right. They think they have to eventually get it right. And they're trying to get it right. So I want to give you all grace tonight um, and thank you for letting me be so uh, open and honest and thank you for letting me say that I don't have it all together <laughs> um, and thank you for letting me just be real with all of you and tell you that the truth is that I'm, you know, I'm struggling and I'm, I'm here with you, but I know that Confidence is something we can grow. And in that moment, when you're by your, when that, when that little voice is saying, don't speak up, don't stand up, don't speak out. You, the only way you're going to do it is if you have confidence. And I truly believe that the world needs women leaders and you can be a leader of one. You can be a leader of you. That's a leader. You don't need to be a leader of a thousand people or a hundred people or 10 people or a department or a division, you can lead you when you put your feet on the ground and get out of bed every day, you're leading yourself. And so I want you to have confidence and I hope that I gave you a little bit of encouragement. Um, if you wanna sign up for the confidence course, I think it's, we're gonna close it on, the, on Friday or Saturday. So we're still enrolling, there's a few spots left. The course, if you have questions about it, it's for, modules. Each module has a lecture, questions in a workbook that you're the work in this part in the workbook that you're going to go through. It can be done totally on your own time. It's all online. It, I would, I would encourage everyone. I built the course. It's short. It's only four modules. I built it for you to take at least a week with each module and listen and maybe listen again, answer the questions, go through it, dig deep. It's not going to be super fun because I'm going to ask you some hard questions and that's growth, right? So you take the, you, you kind of go through it and then halfway through, I'm going to do a webinar where we talk about it. We, I ask questions, you guys can, it's going to be only open to those in the class and we're going to discuss and discuss and we're getting into the more gritty details. So the first is about how we form science as girls, as young girls and the science of it so that you kind of go, oh, that's why I do that. Aha, that's, oh, that's the message I heard and that's why I struggle with this. So it kind of, it's graduated curriculum. Um, you don't have to finish it in four weeks. You can finish it in four years. Um, 
but I, I would encourage you to take at least a week per module just to kind of go through and, you know, the lectures are about 30 to 40 minutes, but then I have questions in a workbook and I really want you to spend time with yourself because that's where real growth comes, right? It's like sitting in the ugliness of what is going on <laughs> and getting to the bottom of it. And man, I see so much growth when women embrace their confidence. In the master class I teach, we have a module on it. And it's like once women go, oh, that's a confidence thing, they just go like this. So I'm really excited that I kind of broke out just the confidence piece and really teased it out and made it into a much bigger module. Do any other, anybody else have a question? I work for male doctors and then lawyers for 20 years. It's not easy. It takes a lot of thick skin. Oh yes. Oh goodness. Thank you. Thank you for working. And thank you for sticking with it. And thank you for that. It, I think if we had more women leaders and more diverse leaders, <laughs> we would not be in the mess that we are in. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, there are a lot of good men, male leaders out there. We just need more diversity at the top. So thank you guys. Um, how, do you, how do you learn not to tear up, tear up like men? Uh, what do you mean? like to, oh, how do you learn not to cry? Okay, this is a really good tip. Um, one of my good friends, well, when I did my TED talk, they made me hire a speech coach, which I really look back and honestly, it was so good for me. I learned so much from her. She became a friend and I've, hi I've had her speak at several events. And she taught me this, I asked her that question because when I was doing my TED talk, I was so afraid I was gonna cry. And I said, I don't think I can do this without crying. And she taught me a, a tip. First, she said, if you're getting angry, because that's when I normally cry, like not in my TED talk, I wasn't angry. <laughs> but when I cry, when I feel like I'm gonna cry in a meeting, it's typically because I'm angry, I'm not sad. Um, I don't know if that's like you. But when it's from anger, the first thing to do is to say, I am passionate about this, do a leading statement, which I talk about in the book. If you, if I, I may cry, I'm okay. Just like I said, I did this to you all, right? Because it, it tells everybody that like, you're not sad. You don't need empathy. You're angry. <laughs> so listen up. Um, I normally say, I'm going to get really passionate about this because I know a lot about this. I'm an expert in this. So if I start to cry, I don't need your empathy. I need you to listen to me. And everybody goes, oh, because very rarely do I angry about something I know nothing about, okay? I get angry when I know something the most in the room and nobody's listening, or I think we're making a really bad decision. That's what makes me angry. So that's a leading statement. The second thing that she taught me is that the thing that when people start crying and they lose it, they hold their breath. So when you're talking, this is what she told me for my TED talk. When you're starting to talk, and you're starting to cry, keep talking like this and keep breathing like this and breathe through it and talk through it and then you won't cry. And it works, it literally works. I did this about a month ago in a meeting where I started feeling myself tear up. So I always think, don't hold my breath because what do we do? When we feel ourselves start to cry, we go, at least this is what I do, I go. And I breath hold. And then you, it's, you can't stop the tears. But she said, or this is the other thing, drink water because it does something to your tear, I don't know. She, she's like a guru and she said either, if you, you have water, drink it, stop and drink water. It, even if you feel like it's an awkward pause, you won't cry. And keep breathing, keep talking, keep breathing, keep talking, keep breathing, keep talking through the tear, don't hold your breath, don't stop. She said, don't stop talking because that's when you will really start crying. So those are my tips directly from her, not from me. She's the expert. Um, let me see, any more? Anything more? You're welcome. Okay, did I miss any questions? Um, oh, Divya, any strategies to facilitate a positive dialogue when speaking up on tough topics? Oh, alienating. Okay, well, I just did a book club last night and um, man, we just talked about this. Several women surgeons um, were bringing this up last night and very marginalized. Um, what do you do when someone is so microaggressive and marginal, marginalizes you? 
and they do it in a way to put you in it's so it's so inappropriate but it, so we talked about two things you can do first there are people that are and i hate to say this but that are just not rehabable <laughs> can i just be honest i would not waste your time trying to formulate a response to all people there are some people that are not are very resistant to see microaggressions apologize change or anything when you're talking about controversial topics the first thing is just to say that um i just did this yesterday in a meeting where i saw blatant bias and discrimination in an article that was being proposed and everyone was really proud of this article and i didn't want to rain on the parade, but I knew I had to speak up. So I said, I'm going to speak on something that is not fun and no one's going to be excited to hear this, but because I care about our culture and because I care about this department, I'm going to speak anyway. And then it flips the, it from something negative to something meaningful. And there's still going to be people that don't listen and that roll their eyes when I say this, that's okay. But there's maybe going to be a few people on the fence that listen. And it shows that you're actually trying to be part of the solution. You're not being the contrarian because you just want to cause strife. You're being the contrarian because you care. So just saying that, right? The other thing that you can do is if somebody says something that's inappropriate is can you repeat that? Because that goes, it makes everybody kind of take a pause. Um, and that's another thing that I have done. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. It was so great to hang out with you ladies tonight. Thank you for joining in. And thank you for all being a part of difficult conversations and for standing up and doing what's right and just wanting to grow your confidence. Go forth and be confident and Check out the confidence course. If you have questions, you can email me. My email is sasha at becomebraveenough.com. Take care. Love you, ladies.